one that is laboring among us, a dynamic speaker. Let's receive Elder Charles Thomas by the word of Amen. amen. as following and if a servant shall plainly say I love my master my wife and my children I will not go out free here we have the reading of the writer of the book of Exodus a very peculiar situation has been formed for here we have a servant who had served all of his bondsmanship. He had served because he was in bondage for some reason or other. He might have been enslaved because of a debt that was owed by him or one of his family. But here he is asked the question, do you love your master? And that's what we like to deal with today. Come on, everybody, repeat the words of the subject with me, with me tonight. How's your love life? How's your love life? Come on, look at somebody else and say, how's your love life? How's your love life? All right. We'd like to deal tonight briefly uh, with love. Love and the emotion love. Love is that emotion that mesmerizes and hypnotizes us. Is it that feeling that we can't explain it? You can try and put it into words, but you can't explain it. Somebody said, love makes me feel good. Y'all ain't hearing me. Somebody said, love makes me feel happy. I want to giggle. I want to laugh. I just cannot explain into words what love does for me. But I come tonight to ask you, how is your love life? Don't you fool yourself. Everybody likes to be loved. From the age of 8 to 80, they like to think that somebody cares, that somebody is concerned about their well-being. And for that reason, God has instituted love one for other. The Bible even condoned it by saying, let brotherly love continue. He let us know that we're supposed to have love for those that misuse us. We're supposed to have love for those that mistreat us. 
for those that abuse us, we're supposed to have love. It's just right to love anyhow because love was the way that Jesus got here. For the Bible said, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son. And that whosoever, and thank God for that whosoever. Uh, for when he said whosoever, he did not just uh, mean me by myself, but he meant the white man and the black man, the Chinese, the whosoever covered the rich man and the poor man. Whosoever meant whosoever will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. I'm talking about how is your love like? Love is that emotion that causes you to see funny. It blinds you. It causes you to see mirages. Love will make you think ugly is pretty and pretty ugly and skinny fat and fat skinny. Love hides a multitude of thoughts. Somebody went on to say that if you fall in love, you can fall in love with a gorilla and that'll just be your gorilla because you fell in love with it. Love is that emotion. Love is that emotion that calls you to hide a multitude of faults. You've seen it work in the eyes of a loving mother. She can have an old no good son and know that that boy just ain't no good. But yet and still she'll tell you quick, that's my child. And I love the boy. Love is that emotion that will draw you and drive you. It's the emotion that will cause you to do things that you say, no, I won't do that. But because of love and on the count of love, you'll find yourself doing it anyway. Love is a lasting thing. It does not just happen overnight, but it's a lasting longing thing. You can't turn it off and cut it off, but it lingers there. Someone went on to say that love is a hurting thing. Somebody said in love you got to give a little and you got to take a little. I'm talking about love. How is your love life? I can remember so vividly when I was in love with the things of the world and the master of the dark, the angel of the dark. He had me in love with him. I was mesmerized and hypnotized by the beauty that he showed me. He showed me all of the glamour and the splendor of the world and told me to partake of it and do whatever I wanted to do. And I did it. But one thing I found out just as soon as I got high or just as soon as I got off doing what he told me to do, he would go and tell somebody else to knock me in my head. This man that I loved didn't love me back. It's a terrible thing to be in love with somebody that don't love you. For I heard somebody say that when you got a heartache, uh, uh, when you got a headache, rather, a little aspirin will see you through. Somebody said that when you got a backache, a little rubbing will do. But somebody else said when you got a heartache, ain't nothing you can do. And for that reason, because of love's heartache, sometimes somebody said that you have trouble, heartaches, and pain because of love. And because of love, men die. Men give them lives for their country. Because of love, men give their money away. Because of love, men give themselves away because of love. Love is that drawing and driving force that will build you up. Or by the same token, love will tear you down. And I came to ask you, how is your love life? And the reason I ask you is because love is that personal effect. Love is that personal thing. It is a personal thing that goes from heart to heart. It is a personal thing that I can explain to you. You got to fall in love for yourself. I cannot tell you how good it makes you feel, but you got to experience it for yourself. And I came to let you know tonight that you cannot live in this world all by yourself. For the Bible, for the words of song has let me know that no man is an island and no man stands alone. Uh, but each man as his brother and each man's grief is my own. Somebody said we need one another. And so I will depend, each man as my brother and each man as my friend. I found out that the world itself, uh, being involved with God and Jesus, found itself in a terrible predicament. God had made man and created man perfect. Uh, but because of man's fault and because of sin, the Bible said because of one man's sin, sin entered the world. 
And because of this sin, it put us out of fellowship with God. Uh, because God cannot stay in an unclean temple. And because of this sin, we was banished from the garden of Eden. Uh, because of this sin, men uh, had to die. And because of the sin, men had to lay down their lives. All because of one man's sin. We was in a worldwide dilemma. The world was dying and perishing on every hand. My Bible records for 434 years, God shut up heaven and didn't want to hear from nobody. He said, I love them, but they won't do right. And so I don't want to hear from them. And because of this, God, God shut up heaven. And because of him shutting up heaven, a man couldn't get a prayer through. And man couldn't get no answer from God. But I, 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 like, to, I like to explain it on this wise before I go to my seat. I like to explain it by saying this. The world was in the World Majors League Series. We was in the baseball game of life. Yes, we was. The score was already one to nothing. And I heard, I said I heard, somebody said that it was the bottom of the ninth inning. The score was one to nothing. The devil had us down and seemed like there was no way out. Somebody said that the devil went and got hatred and put hatred on first base. Somebody said that the devil went and got confusion and put confusion on second base. He went and got murder and put murder on third base. He took shortstop and put lying at the shortstop position. Lord have mercy. And I heard, I heard, I heard somebody say that the devil took right field and in right field he put death. Y'all don't hear me tonight. I heard somebody say that the devil took center field and in center field he put fornication. In left field he put envy. He had his whole lineup and he was ready to do battle. Lord have mercy. But they needed somebody, somebody to go out burned, to go to bat for us. I saw them when they called up Elijah and told old man Elijah, I tell you, Elijah, I want you to go to bat for me. I told old Elijah to go out there for bat for me. Elijah with the bat, he wound up and hit the ball and got the first base, but first base wasn't good enough. We needed somebody to hit the home run ball. We needed somebody to bring us out. Somebody said, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, then the master of the deep, he heard From the waters, he lifted me and saved me. Quit now, and I'm not due. But before I close, they said I got to find somebody to hit the home run ball. They call old man Job. Job went to bat. He swung one time, and I heard the umpire say one strike. Job swung two times, and I heard him say two strike. And on the third strike, they threw Job out of the ballpark. Y'all ain't hear me? Yes, sir. I saw him when he went looking for somebody else. He said, I need somebody. They said, Samson, he's a long ball hitter. He's a strong man. He's a strong guy. We'll call on Samson. They said, no, we can't use Samson because he got involved with Delilah. And because of Delilah, he got his eyes put out so he can't see right. Yes! Oh. 
Lord have mercy. I feel my help now. Lord Jesus, we got to find somebody. The score is already one to nothing. The score is already one to nothing. And we need somebody to go out burn for us with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. But I heard somebody say, why don't you try love? Why don't you try love? Love will do it for us. Somebody said they found old man love down by the altar, up under the altar. He was down there praying for the other folk in the world. But I heard him say, oh, love, get your suit ready. Love, yeah, yeah, your suit ready. Love said prepare me a body and I'll go down and redeem mankind. If you need somebody, I'll go. If you want somebody, here am I. Here am I. Send me. If you want somebody to walk right. If you want somebody to talk right. If you want somebody to do right. Here am I. I'll go for you. I'll do what you want me to do, I'll say what you want me to say, I'll go where you want me to go, it don't make no difference how far it is, I'll go for you, yes, yes, Lord have mercy, y'all know the story, I saw old man love, stepped up to the battle's box, he stepped up to the box, the devil pulled out the ball, showed him the and every time it got ready to swing, every time it got ready to pitch, the devil wouldn't pitch the ball. He do him one curve. Y'all don't hear me? When he do that curve, that was one strike. That's when they took your Lord and my God and took him to the court, to the Sanhedrin court, and then the Sanhedrin court. Then the cult, then the cult, old man love. He said, I've got to do it. I've got to. I've got to get a home run. The devil two street strikes. The second strike covered when they took your Lord and my God. 72 plots of thorns in his head. Nailed him to a cross. And he died. Died. The shot died till the moon ran down in blood. Died. 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 But don't see me now. I heard him say that's a home run that won the game for us that won the game for us somebody said when nothing else could help love L-O-V love it lifted me I can't explain it I don't know why Jesus loved me I don't know why